Morning everyone. Today we're going to go over some pre-flight procedures as well as some post-flight actions. These steps before and after the flight are incredibly important for safety as well as helping us to learn what we could do better next time when we take to the skies. Here we have our C-172 sitting out on the grass and the weather in Wales is getting a bit colder now so let's wrap up warm. We will skip a few things in the course material that pertain to real life flying such as health checks to make sure you're safe to fly an aircraft. Let's start with the first task, flight authorization. The first and main distinction in the simulator world you will need to make when you are flying is VFR or IFR. VFR means visual flight rules. This means flying visually by looking out of the window and not judging your control purely based on your instruments. You can use your instruments in VFR, but not rely on them and nothing else. IFR means instrument flight rules. This means that you are flying in the mode where you are able to rely completely on your instruments to maintain safe control of the aircraft in flight. If you are flying through a fog bank or flying at night, by definition you should be IFR. Also, note that while flying IFR, you can use your vision out of the cockpit to maintain your control of the aircraft. Nobody's saying that uh, you can't, and it's not good practice to say that you shouldn't be looking out of the window. But IFR simply means that when it comes down to it, your primary judgment should be influenced by your instruments and charts. Our next point is filing a flight plan. Generally, when you fly on a simulator by yourself, this step in the process is not needed. But if you are flying online on a multiplayer network, such as VATSIM or IVAO, you would be required to file our flight plan and send it to the tower before departure. Let's do this now. First, let's navigate to the flight plan page in vPilot and work from the top left down to the bottom right. To begin with, we have the IFR and VFR selection. Since we have just covered this, you should be able to make an informed choice. Next, you input your departure and arrival airport with the addition of an alternate airport if the weather is bad at the arrival. Then set the departure time that you would like, also the time the flight will take you and how much flight time you will have with your fuel on board. Finally, your cruise speed and your cruise altitude. If you are flying in VFR, this should be in thousands, like 3000 or 8000. But if you are flying IFR, it should be in flight levels, such as flight level 240, which is 24,000 feet effectively. On the right hand, we want to identify if we are a heavy aircraft. This is generally only if you are flying something like a Boeing 767 or larger. Next is one of the most important aspects of the flight plan, your route. If you are flying IFR, you can add your waypoints, but if you are flying VFR, you could add VRPs, which are visual reference points, and general notes such as flying north along the Welsh coast to Anglesey, or something like that. Sometimes uh, that's specific enough for ATC, but also allowing you a bit of independence. In the real world, you can sometimes even file an open flight plan, which basically means you can just take off and go wherever you want without telling ATC where you are going beforehand. One of the last boxes is for general remarks on your flight. If you are new to the online ATC world, you might put new to VFR flight, just so that the ATC controller knows that and they will understand if you are slow with communication or need the messages read back to you a couple times during your flight. The final part here is to check the boxes at the bottom so that the ATC controllers knows that uh, they can contact you via your microphone or if you will only respond via the built-in chat box in vPilot. One point we could make here before moving on to the pre-flight checks is flying equipment. Generally for this course all the equipment we need is already bolted onto the aircraft. A few things you might find helpful as a simulator pilot is a good headset with a built-in microphone and a subscription to Navigraph charts. This is very helpful when you want to fly into the bigger airports that have SIDS and STARS, also uh, as well as complex taxiways. For the small aircraft pilot, there is one freeware program that I cannot recommend enough. It's called Plan G. This is an application that allows you to see the VFR world as you fly around in it. The app integrates with your simulator to give you an up-to-date positioning on the map and it will also give you incredibly helpful navigation information such as VORs, NDBs, VRPs and more. 
we will get into navigation for the light aircraft in another module. But just for now, trust me when I say it's super cool and there's nothing stopping you from downloading it and learning from it. Now let's move on to the actual pre-flight of the aircraft itself. A2A Simulations has already done some fantastic work in helping us with our C-172 pre-flight. They have built in a pre-flight system which allows us to easily do a visual inspection of the aircraft as we walk around. Let's do this now. Upon entering the cabin, Peter tube cover, remove. Pilot's operating handbook, in plane. Weight and balance, check. Parking brake, check. Control wheel lock, remove. Ignition switch, off. Avionics master switch, off. Battery master switch, on. Peter heat, on. Fuel quantity, check. Avionics master switch, on. Static pressure alt source valve, off. Annunciator panel test switch, check all lights illuminate. Annunciator panel test switch, release. Check that appropriate lights remain on. Fuel selector, both. Fuel shutoff valve, on, push fully in. Flaps, extend. Peter heat, off. Avionics master switch, off. Battery master switch, off. Elevator trim, Set for takeoff. Left wing. Flap. Check for security and condition. Aileron. Wingtip and lights. Check condition. Check for proper movement and security. Fuel tank vent opening. Check for blockage. Stool warning opening. Check for blockage. Wing tie down, disconnect. Landing and taxi lights, check for condition. Leading edge, check for damage. Main wheel tire, check for proper inflation and condition, remove wheel chock. Fuel tank sump, quick drain valves. Inspect pitot tube, drain or inspect fuel. Fuel quantity, check visually for desired level. Nose. Left static source opening, check for blockage. Engine cooling air inlets, clear of obstructions. Air filter, check for restrictions from debris. Check propeller for damage and security. Fuel strainer quick drain valve, drain and inspect fuel. Nose wheel, check for proper inflation and condition. Check for proper strut extension. Engine oil dipstick. Check the oil level. Right wing. Fuel quantity in right tank. Check for the desired level. Fuel tank sump. Quick drain valves. Drain and inspect the fuel. Main wheel tire. Check for proper inflation and condition. Remove wheel chock. Wing tie down, disconnect. Leading edge, check for damage. Aileron check for proper movement and security. Wing tip and lights, check condition. Flap, check for security and condition. Tail. Tail tie down, disconnect. Control surfaces check movement and security. Trim tab check security and condition. Antennas check security and condition. Fuselage. Baggage door check lock with key. Finally, left under wing. Pitot tube. Check that pitot is warm to touch after turning on pitot heater in the cockpit for a few minutes. There are a few more steps before takeoff, such as run ups and mag checks but they will be covered in another video in greater detail. Here we come to the end of our pre-flight procedures and now we will skip forward to our post-flight actions. When taxiing into a stand after your flight, take note and think about where you will leave your C-172. Will you be leaving it in the hangar or in the open overnight? If so, depending on your outside temperature, think about plugging in your engine heater. 
Always make sure you use wheel chocks and tie downs before leaving. These are important as a gust of wind could lift the aircraft up and cause damage. The last thing is to note down your flight time and log it. In the simulator world, this might mean filing your PIREP if you are flying for a virtual airline. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video where we finally get airborne. You have all been patient while we go through the PPL series step by step, and it's time to get an overview of all of the aircraft controls and how they affect your flight.